somewhere between five and eight. That was how many bones Alfie was sure he was about to break as he lost his grip on the drain pipe, fell ten feet and landed bum first in the flower bed outside the prison walls. Alfie was fourteen years old and skinny, with thick mousy brown hair that always seemed to curl down his face no matter how much jelly put in it. His eyes were a deep sea green which hit you more in person than it did in, fo- than it did in photos. Everyone said he got them from his grandmother. Alfie wiggled his toes and was happy to discover that he could still feel his legs. He sat up, rubbed the back of his neck and wiped the mud from his watch. It was a little after 9.30pm, right on schedule. He, was, he had planned this breakout break down to the minute. If his calculations were correct, then he wouldn't even be missed for STAY WHERE YOU ARE! Then again, Alfie's plans had a habit of going wrong. The gruff voice boomed down from the window he'd just climbed, well, fallen from. By the time Alfie had scrambled to his feet, he could hear heavy footsteps somewhere deep inside the cell block coming his way. Oh, the man in black, thought Alfie. There's no way he's stopping me this time. No way. Alfie sprinted across the lawn towards the street. Vaulting over a low brick wall, he caught a glimpse of the huge arch of Wembley Stadium glowing in the distance. As much as he hated the prison, he had to admit its position on a hill just outside London gave it some spectacular views. Alfie risked a look back just in time to see the dark-suited, broad-shouldered man with neatly clipped hair hurdle the wall and tear after him. Stop! Alfie sped up, legs already on fire with the effort as he flashed past cars parked along the narrow tree-lined street. But the man in black was closing on him fast. I said stop! Alfie skidded on a patch of leaves and veered into a park that had appeared on his left. He might not be as fast as as his pursuer, but the knight was on his side. He pushed through some bushes and crouched behind an oak tree. Pressing his face against the cold, wet bark, he ignored his desperate need to gasp down air. Branches snapped as the man in black bulldozed his way through the scrub. Alfie stayed still and watched him barrel out of the trees, grumbling and cursing with every sapling that whipped him across his face. Finally, free of their grasp, the man in black spun around 360 degrees in a desperate search for his prey, and then ran on in the opposite direction. Alfie finally sucked in a supersized lungful of air. That was too close. A few minutes later, double-checking no one was on his trail, Alfie crossed over the station road bridge. A train thundered below him on its way out of the city. Every night he would lie awake in his cell listening to the distant rumble from the tracks and dream about hopping onto a carriage one day and just seeing where it took him. Mountains would be good, or a forest, or a lonely moorland. Alfie had always liked the wilderness somewhere remote where he could just be by himself and a bus trundle pass, faces gazing blankly from the windows. Alfie snapped out of it. What was he thinking? There were too many cameras on the station, too many people. Besides, he had his mission. It was decided. He needed to focus. Alfie picked up the pace, fished a crumpled baseball cap out of his jacket pocket and pulled it over his head. The one thing that he'd learned about disguises over the years was that less is more. Forget false beards and noses, the trick was not to be draw too much attention to yourself. Blend in, be inconspicuous, it was Alfie's favourite word. He hurried across the bridge and onto the bustling high street. It was a world away from his usual surroundings, but he was enjoying himself. It was just so good to be out. Alfie broke into a jog, sticking as much as he could to the shadows, avoiding the late night shoppers who passed him by without a glance. And then suddenly, there it was in front of him. A modest little building with a bright neon sign in the window. His goal. The end to his quest. Alfie reached for the door handle and stopped in his tracks. Snipers. Half a dozen of them, sitting inside. They were dug in around a table, idly adjusting their telescopic lenses, no doubt swapping war stories as they waited for their target. For him. Alfie realised his mistake, but it was too late. He shouldn't have stopped walking. He should have just breezed past, not gawped like a dumb kid straight at the enemy. As bad luck would have it, one of the snipers, bearded and craggy with all manner of equipment draped over his shoulders and shoved into his util- into his- As bad luck would have it, one of the snipers, bearded and craggy with all manner of equipment draped over his shoulders and shoved into a utility belt, glanced up and locked eyes with Alfie. He couldn't hear He couldn't hear him through the glass of the door, but Alfie could read his lips well enough. There he is! Mission aborted. For the second time that night, Alfie ran for his life, but this time there was nowhere to hide. The parade of shops was too well lit, 
and he was still tired from his foot race with the man in black. Behind him, the snipers piled out of the building, readying their weapons, unhooking tripods, bringing scopes to their eyes as they gave chase. Alfie plunged across the road, threading the needle between a bus and a cab. Horns blared and air brakes hissed. He couldn't afford to give them a clear shot. These were pros. All they needed was one split-second chance, and he was history. On the other side of the road, Alfie spotted an alleyway between a pub and a mobile phone shop. He ducked down it, but there was no telling where it led, and he could hear the sniper's shouts not far behind. Then he saw it, large, square and green, with a hinged rubber lid. No choice. Alfie hauled himself up and into the bin, slamming the lid down behind him. It stank of rotten food, and Alfie tried to pretend it didn't smell like someone had been sick into it as well. He froze as the heavy footfalls and breathless yells of the snipers approached. He closed his eyes and prayed. Walk past. Walk past. Footsteps came and went. Then, silence. They'd gone. Alfie was desperate to escape his foul hiding place, but he forced himself to wait another full minute before he eased the lid up and peeked out. Flash! Light exploded all around him as the bearded sniper took a clean headshot. Alfie screamed and fell back. Alfie screamed and flew back, a thousand supernovas in his eyes. He looked up, dazed, as the sniper leaned in for another shot, tearing back the bin's lid and pushing the long lens of his camera into Alfie's face. Say cheese, your highness! Prince Alfred Henry Alexander Louis, Prince of Wales and heir to the throne of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, stared up from the depths of the bin and gave the paparazzi photographer a big, sarcastic thumbs up. Happy now? Alfie couldn't even summon up much anger. This photographer was just doing his job. What do you think? said the rat-faced little man. Who wants a photo of the future King of England hiding in a bin? That'll be 10,000 quid, thank you very much. The photographer got a whiff of the bin's interior and recoiled. Four, have you been sick in there as well, your highness? Suddenly the photographer was hauled off his feet. It was the man in black, otherwise known as Brian, Alfie's royal protection officer. For once, Alfie was pleased to see him. Brian manhandled the indignant sniper away with one shove of his mighty palm. That's enough, you've had your fun. The photographer didn't put up much of a fight. One glance at Alfie's bodyguard told him that he was ex-Special Forces. But then, why bother? He'd got what he came for. He holstered his camera and sauntered off, getting out his phone, no doubt to start the bidding for his exclusive snap of the prince in the bin. Satisfied that the threat was gone, Brian turned back to Alfie and fixed him with a weary stare. OK, Brian, you found me. Your turn to hide. Shall I count to 20? Brian sighed. He wasn't in the mood for Alfie's jokes tonight. What were you popping out for this time? Curry? Fish and chips? Pizza, actually. Ambrosio's does the best pepperoni in town. It also happens to be where all the paps go to eat every Thursday night, Brian snorted. You're annoyed with me, aren't you? Making you run around like that, said Alfie. I was, till I saw you hiding in a bin. That's cheered me right up. Suppose it's back to prison then, is it? Alfie extended his hand, but Brian backed off, holding his nose. If you're talking about school, then yeah, it is. Can't wait to see how you explain this one to the headmaster tomorrow, he laughed. Alfie tried to clamber out of the bin, but Brian pushed him back again. Hold up, you're not getting in my car smelling like that. I can't walk back, Alfie pleaded. There'll be snipers everywhere by now. Brian furrowed his brow and looked up and down the alleyway. Good point. Hold your breath. Why? Alfie ducked as Brian slammed the lid back down over him. Brian! Alfie yelled from the darkness. Put a sock in it, there's a good lad. You never know, you might get lucky and find some pizza in there. The bodyguard grinned as he wheeled the bin off, whistling, God save the king.